Welcome to this tutorial on the basics of the Garmin G1000 Avionics Suite. Whether you're a beginner or looking for a refresher, this video will guide you through the essential features and basic operations of the G1000. Download our checklists at monkairlines.com, link in the description. The G1000 is a fully integrated flight deck system, consisting of two primary components, the primary flight display, or PFD, and the multifunction display, or MFD. The PFD provides critical flight information such as airspeed, altitude, attitude, and heading. The MFD complements this by displaying navigation maps, engine data, and additional system information. To begin, turn on the master switches and start up the aircraft. The G1000 will perform a self-test and display its initialization screen. After starting up the aircraft, turn on the avionics switches to turn both screens. Press the Enter key on the MFD to acknowledge the messages and proceed. In this particular aircraft, the Cessna 172 Skyhawk, both avionics displays are typically turned on after the engine is running. This procedure helps prevent electrical surges that can occur during engine startup, which could potentially damage the sensitive avionics equipment. For a complete startup guide, you can download both our startup and full flight checklists at monkairlines.com. These resources are designed to ensure your operations are smooth, safe, and by the book. The PFD is your primary source of flight critical information. On the left, you'll find the airspeed tape, which shows your current speed in knots. In the center is the attitude indicator, displaying pitch and roll information. To the right is the altitude tape, showing your altitude in feet. At the bottom, the heading indicator helps you stay on course. The MFD offers a wealth of information. By default, it displays a moving map that shows terrain, waypoints, and airspace. You can use the knobs and buttons to access additional pages, such as engine data, weather, and system status. Let's take a closer look at the buttons and controls around the PFD and MFD. The Direct To button allows quick navigation to a waypoint. The FMS knob is used to navigate menus and enter data, rotate the small knob for fine tuning, and the large knob for major adjustments. Above that, you'll find the CLR button, which cancels entries, and the ENT button, which confirms them. Along the bottom of the displays, you'll see soft keys that change depending on the current menu. These controls are consistent between the PFD and MFD, so you can quickly switch between navigation, engine monitoring, and other functions. Now, let's navigate to a specific waypoint using the Direct To function. Press the Direct To button, then use the FMS knob to enter the waypoint identifier. Once entered, press Enter to confirm and again to activate the route. The magenta line on the map and heading indicator will guide you directly to your destination. To create a flight plan, press the Flight Plan button. Use the FMS knob to enter waypoints sequentially. After entering each waypoint, press Enter to confirm. Once your flight plan is complete, press the Flight Plan button and zoom out with the Range button to confirm that it's correct. To manage radio communication, the G1000 features dual comm and Navi radios. The active frequency is shown at the top of the PFD with the standby frequency next to it. The active is the left one with the standby to the right. To switch frequencies, press the swap button. Use the FMS knob to adjust the standby frequency. Rotate the large knob for the megahertz and the small knob for the kilohertz. The transponder is essential for air traffic control and situational awareness. To enter a squawk code, press the transponder button, which is labeled XPDR. Use the buttons below the screen to input the desired code. You can also select transponder modes, such as standby, altitude reporting, or on, depending on ATC requirements. The altimeter on the G1000 allows you to adjust the barometric pressure for accurate altitude readings. The current setting is displayed below the altitude tape. To adjust it, rotate the barrow knob located near the PFD. Set the pressure provided by ATC, or use the standard setting of 29.92 inches of mercury when flying above the transition altitude. The G1000 is equipped with a built-in autopilot system. To engage it, press the AP button. Use mode buttons such as HDG for heading, NAV for navigation mode, 
and ALT for altitude hold. Adjust values like heading and altitude using the knobs. The autopilot seamlessly follows the commands you set. If you are following the GPS, make sure that the CDI is set to GPS. The MFD's features can be accessed using the FMS knobs. Rotate the large FMS knob to navigate through major page groups and the small knob for subpages. Use the buttons below the MFD to adjust further. Thank you for watching this quick tutorial of the basic functions of the Garmin G1000. Stay tuned as we'll go in depth with every function in later videos. Here at Monk Airlines, the mission is simple, to deliver short, concise, and highly informative tutorials. We make learning easy and packed with useful insights. If there's anything in the videos that wasn't clear, feel free to drop a comment so we can improve. We have got plenty more waiting for you. Whether it's mastering another aircraft or uncovering more aviation secrets, the sky's the limit. Thank you for your time. You are cleared for takeoff.